welcome to The Rich Report, a podcast with news and information on the world of big data. Today, my guest is from the SCSI Trade Association. We have the president of SCSI Trade Association, uh, Marty Sigalski. Marty, welcome to the show today. Why, why don't we just go right into it here? Uh, I'm interested in this new development. It's called uh, uh, SCSI Express. I was wondering if you could tell us more about that. What we're going to talk about today is uh, some new activities and things that have been going on within the T10 committee and the SCSI Trade Association looking at extending the SCSI platform, which has been around for a number of years, um, into some new areas and optimizing it for some new use cases. So what is SCSI Express? SCSI Express is basically a combination of SCSI protocols combined with PCIe in order to do a path to PCI-based storage. And the reason this is of interest is being driven by a number of things. It's uh, the lower latency of PCI Express to improve performance, particularly with solid-state devices. And uh, the other reason for doing it using the SCSI protocol set is the management infrastructure that SCSI brings with it, and it's something familiar to all data center uh, operators, as well as the OEMs that manufacture these devices, it fits right into their existing ecostructures. Um, but this is really a way of combining the existing SCSI protocol with PCI Express um, in a standardized method. In the past, each individual OEM or vendor would have their own protocol for transporting SCSI commands across the PCI Express bus. What this does is does it in a standardized fashion so that it becomes an industry standard, particularly making it advantageous for solid-state devices as those devices evolve. So basically, uh, people may not think about it uh, as being only, or may think about it only as being a high-end uh, enterprise class storage interconnector protocol, but the reality is SCSI is everywhere within the protocol stack. It is the common hub uh, for storage interfaces uh, in, all, in pretty much every operating system, as well as in external devices, such as external RAID controllers, storage systems of that nature. So you look at the different protocols, your typical CD-ROM drive or, or DVD drive is using a TAPI, which is basically a way of transporting SCSI commands over ATA or SATA. USB with the UAS protocol is again, using SCSI across USB, even if you may have a SATA drive at the other end of the wire for doing your backups, for example, there's a converter in that device that actually translates SCSI commands into the ATA commands or serial ATA commands for the, the drive that's attached. But what's going across the wire is still SCSI protocols, memory sticks, FireWire, InfiniBand, you know, iSCSI, fiber channel, fiber channel over Ethernet, you know, parallel SCSI and serial attached SCSI, these are all SCSI protocols, and basically SCSI is the, the most widely implemented logical storage protocol there is today. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the SCSI Express value proposition. From the standpoint of performance, it's going to provide low latency and high performance, particularly of interest for some of the newer evolving solid-state technologies, and it also allows some new storage architectures by combining the combination of SAS and PCI Express together. From a reliability standpoint, the SCSI protocol stack and ecosystem is well developed. It's very robust and very reliable, and it's really architected for high availability with the ability to do multi-initiators, multiple ports, failover, things of that nature, which the, there exists infrastructure for performing those kinds of functions. Additionally, it's investment protection. Just because it coexists with SAS allows you to make a choice between having a SAS device, a SCSI Express device, plugged into the same serviceable slot. And it also leverages a very robust uh, middleware ecosystem, allowing for rapid deployments and all the feature sets that people have come, become accustomed to having in the enterprise. So let's take a look at the SCSI Express components. Basically, the, the, there are five major pieces here. You know, the SCSI command set, obviously, is one of them. Um, the next is called SCSI over PCI, which is a specification for how you package SCSI commands into message units or information units, as they're called in the standard, and how those information units are passed between a SCSI target and a SCSI initiator and vice versa. And 
once you've created these SCSI information units or messages, you need to get them across the PCI Express bus. And the method for doing that is called the PCI Express queuing interface, or PQI. And that provides the, the model by which these messages are passed and with the different queues and the different features that they provide. Additionally, you have what's called the SFF8639 connector, which is a multifunction connector that allows you to have on the same connector PCI Express up to four lanes, SAS two lanes, and, and SATA devices typically you can plug into this connector. Um, so this allows up to six lanes uh, of traffic, two of which are dedicated to SAS and SATA, four of which are dedicated to PCI Express in a common backplane slot. And then, of course, you need PCI Express itself, which is the transport used for every server out there today. SCSI Express SSD used in a server, for example, would plug in as such. We have your typical server with the operating system, its applications, and driver stacks. You would have a PCI Express root complex, and from that you have your PCI Express lanes. Now that would be cabled or routed to a backplane that uses this SFF8639 connector, into which you can pr plug the SCSI Express SSDs. Uh, now, talk a little bit more about that slot. It, it's more than just the ability to plug PCI Express SSDs in there. And this is something we're calling Express Bay, which is basically a multifunction 8639 connector uh, provisioned on a backplane along with uh, the capability to deliver more power to that slot and being wired up for both PCI Express and SAS and SATA. So really it supports multiple protocols. It's in the process right now of standardizing the electrical specification for Gen 3 PCI Express with this connector. Um, so look, look out several months and you would expect to see the spec being published on that connector in backplanes for the purposes of both PCI Express SSDs as well as SAS hard drives or SAS SSDs. Uh, the objective here is to provide a lot more uh, of the features that people are accustomed with storage devices. For example, the ability to do hot plug and, and removal devices for service. Um, SAS and SATA have had that for a long time. PCI Express uh, with the standard chem card has not had that feature. Uh, this will allow basically over time as the protocols for PCI Express evolve, to also be able to do hot plug eventually on PCI Express. So basically, PCI Express hardware and software, and let's talk a little bit about the components. These here are the most common components. Basically, you will have SCSI Express controllers, which in this, the way we're calling a SCSI Express controller, is a controller uh, that actually supports SCSI Express and SOP PQI functions on the back end of the controller. So it would be something like a RAID controller that you can plug multiple SCSI Express devices into it and have it communicate using the SLP PQI protocol. These controllers will also typically support SAS and SATA devices, so the controller can do both functions, both PCI Express, SAS, and SATA. Uh, PCI Express or SCSI Express drives uh, will basically typically show up in the uh, by four interface, it will use the 8639 connector, and there will typically be in the two and a half inch form factor. And then, of course, you'll need a driver for that, so the SCSI Express drivers uh, will be typically provided by storage OEMs, IHBs, and uh, operating system vendors. Now, there's also available now uh, drivers that have been put into the Linux open source environment uh, for both a block driver and a SCSI class, uh, class driver for Linux, and those are available, and people are working on those in the development community. So thinking forward with SCSI Express, because there's, there's going to be additional devices that will use this SOP PQI protocol, so what we're doing is we've you know, proactively gone out there and decided what the namings of these devices should be to avoid confusion. So I think we already talked about it. A SCSI Express drive, and that could be a SCSI Express SSD, HDD, or, or whatever, but basically it would be a SCSI Express drive that plugs into that standard form factor like a disk drive would. Uh, SCSI Express RAID controller, we've talked about that. 
uh, a SCSI Express card drive and or a SCSI Express SSC solid state card, or uh, basically we've combined or allowed the use of the standard SNEA definitions for some of the some of the cards in combination with the SCSI Express name. So, for example, a SCSI Express M.2 drive uh, would be called a SCSI Express M.2 or a SCSI Express SSM, which is a little more generic term that SNEA uses for a solid state storage module. Other devices, for example, if a controller uh, for fiber channel used SOP PQI to cross the talk across the PCI Express bus, um, then it would basically be a, a SCSI Express bridge because it's bridging the SCSI Express PCI protocol to some other protocol, for example, fiber channel or InfiniBand, for example. So, so we would call those devices SCSI Express bridges, and from a switch standpoint, we would call a SCSI Express switch any switching device that also switches the PCI Express for SCSI Express use. This could potentially be an expander or something like that that also does SAS and SATA protocols, but could potentially also tunnel PCI Express through it. And then we know some people have come up with mezzanine cards for SSDs. Um, and again, this would fit under the generic term of SCSI Express solid state module or SCSI Express mezzanine drive. So let's take a look at the time frames that we're talking about here. Um, we're here now in the first half of 2013. And we're at the point where some SCSI Express samples, we expect to see some samples, prototypes available uh, sometime this half a year. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the drivers were put into the open source environment back in January of this year, early part of the 2013. Um, we're expecting a plug fest probably at the end of this year uh, for our first plug fest. And then typically, you know, 12 months after that is when we typically see the first end user devices become available after we've had our first plug test. So I would expect in the 2014 time frame, you start to see some of these devices become available in the marketplace. So the kind of target environments that we're seeing people looking to do here are things like, for example, caching, uh, virtualization, um, high-performance computing, a lot of complex algorithms for modeling, anywhere where you're looking to get the maximum amount of performance where the performance of the application is directly related to the performance of the storage media, this would be something that would be of interest uh, that people would look at for using SCSI Express. So summarizing, uh, SCSI Express is basically enterprise-class PCI-based storage. We provide an, an industry standard path to getting there, from the protocol standpoint, it's increased performance through lower latencies, and it does coexist very nicely with SAS using the express break concept. It's also used in the proven SCSI protocol that people are familiar with and that, it, and that there's a uh, large install base and ecosystem around those protocols providing that uniform, unified management and, and common command set that people are familiar with. And it's also not just about SCSI Express. Uh, there are a lot of other things going on in the SCSI world that will also increase performance even with it, with existing interfaces. For example, 12 gigabit SAS, uh, we expect to start seeing that product shipping to end users before the end of this calendar year. We've already gone through two plug fests with a third plug fest planned at the end of this year also. Um, the other thing is Express Bay, to allow for higher performance, the, the, the bay has to be provisioned for additional power for these PCI Express SSD devices, so typically up to about 25 watts in one of these slots. In the past, SAS performance was not limited by the interface. It's limited by the number of active die you can have simultaneously on the product to stay, to stay within the typical 9 to 10 watt budget that people design their their back plane slots for, for SAS uh, hard drives. Uh, solid state drives at maximum performance can actually use a lot more power than that. So with the ability to control the, the power in that slot to be more than the typical 9 to 10 watts, up to 25 watts, and the ability of the devices to manage their power, both SCSI Express and SAS devices will now be able to use the same amount of power and get very similar performances in that 25-watt envelope. 
So basically, when a device is plugged in, the device and the host will go through a process of discovering what features each has, and if the host discovers that the drive can run at higher power, the host can enable that drive and tell it, go ahead and use additional power in that slot, give me some more performance. And that can be done very simply. The other thing is an extended copy feature, which allows copying from one device to the other without the host being involved. In the past, a typical copy command would involve the host reading data from one device into its memory and, then, and taking it from its memory and shipping it back out to a second device. This feature in SCSI actually now allows devices to go between the transfers go directly between the two devices without the need for the host to actually transfer the data through its you know through its memory one trip in and one trip out that greatly improves performance as well as, as efficiency. The other thing that's going on in, in the uh, T10 standards committee is atomic rights. Not only atomic rights for a single uh, contiguous block but atomic rights for multiple contiguous blocks that aren't necessarily sequential. So that allows for improvements of operating systems, uh, file systems, databases, by using these atomic commands, where they're guaranteed to either happen entirely or not at all. That combined with uh, some other things, uh, there are other activities going on in the way of hinting uh, from the standpoint of what how the system being able to tell the device what kind of access patterns is likely to expect for the different transfers, and it allows the device and the system to coordinate and perhaps gain some additional performance or efficiencies. So with that, I'd like to conclude saying uh, basically, on the next slide, uh, we have a list of member companies who have participated heavily in these standards, and we're continuing to move forward, and uh, SCSI is, no, is not standing still from the standpoint of technology evolution but moving forward, uh, keeping up with the technologies. Well, great. Well, f thanks for that, Marty. You know, I, I learned a little bit there. I had no idea that uh, SCSI was underneath uh, a lot of these connection protocols that I use every day. Pretty much everything, yes. <laughs> yeah. I thought it went away with my Mac SCSI cables that yeah, I, I threw out years ago. a lot ago, of USB uh, cable and hook it up to uh, <laughs> any system to try and do a, uh, talk to a drive and you're using SCSI. So, Marty, as president of the SCSI Trade Association, you know, you must be dealing a lot with these uh, SSD vendors. That's they, How do they see this as a business opportunity as far as getting their gear into the enterprise? Well, there are a number of people who are uh, part of the state membership who are actively working on the standard as well as coming up with products. So they're all the, you know, you can look at the list of members and you can see a lot of the folks there also have SSD products. Yeah. Uh, so you're going to, and, and a lot of the system vendors who integrate these are very uh, dependent on SCSI protocols for their part of the system and the infrastructure within their system. So there's definitely some, a lot of interest involved in, in moving this forward. And, and, and Marty, as far as when, uh, you know, as, far, we, as we look to the future, uh, as PCI Express as that goes on to its next generations, does this kind of uh, allow you to kind of hook your train onto those performance enhancements as well? Sure. Um, we're, you know, we're going to follow the same evolution that, you know, PCI Express does. It's in Gen 3 right now. Uh, Gen 4, you're probably looking at, you know, you know, three or four years away, which would be a doubling of the, of the speed there. Uh, you know, SAS, on the other hand, has been keeping up with PCI Express. We're, we're in the process of releasing a 12 gigabit SAS now. Mm -hmm. um, and that will be ramping up over the next year or two. And then we actually have already started work on 24 gigabit SAS. So we'll be doubling the speed again. Um, and again, it'll be about the same time frame that Gen 4 PCI Express comes out. Well, that's terrific. Well, Marty, I want to thank you once again for uh, coming on the show today. Thank you. You bet. Okay, folks, that's it for the Rich Report. Stay tuned for more news and information on the world of big data.